Let's talk about some surgical uh, processes or procedures that also contribute to malabsorption. One of the most common surgeries in the U.S. today um, is a gallbladder surgery. And I see this most commonly, at least in my own experience in my practice, a lot about, I'd say half the people that come to me have already had their gallbladder taken out. And, and, they, and actually, in my opinion, they didn't need to have their gallbladder removed. It's just that they had pain and their doctor said, you don't need your gallbladder, let's remove it. Remember going back to like the 70s and uh, the early 80s when pediatricians used to take out children's tonsils, right? It was one of the most common surgeries. They would just say, you don't need tonsils. It's it's, a, it's, it's inert tissue, you don't really need it. And tonsils are a major part of the immune system. It's what protects kids, but they were removing tonsils. Well, they do that to the gallbladders nowadays. They say, oh, you don't need your gallbladder, you still have a liver. Um, the gallbladder is very important. It's, it's what regulates the, the secretion of bile, right? And you need bile to absorb fat. So gallbladder removal, uh, or oftentimes referred to as cholecystectomy, is, um, is one of the major causes of malabsorption. A lot of people overweight, obese, they get these gastric bypass surgeries or these band surgeries. You understand that when you bypass your stomach, you're creating a host of malnutrition problems long term. Um, and that's, you know, there are different types of medical procedures. I mean, in some cases, they're bypassing the whole thing. In other cases, they're bypassing a part of the stomach or they're banding part of the stomach to make it smaller so that you get fuller and don't eat as much. But when, that ha when you do that, remember there's less surface area for your stomach to generate what it needs to generate. What does the stomach produce? It produces intrinsic factor to help you absorb vitamin B12. It produces pepsin. It produces uh, hydrochloric acid to help you break down your proteins. So what ends up happening is malabsorption, again, as we talked about earlier. Colon resection, I see this quite a bit too. It's when um, somebody has had an inflammatory bowel disease, like, a, like an inflamed colon, and the doctors don't know why. Um, they just say, let's remove six inches or let's remove eight inches. Um, so, and then they remove a big chunk of a person's colon um, because the inflammation is, is being uncontrolled. And that, again, that leads to lifelong. Anytime you remove part of the organ, that's lifelong potential for malabsorption. Pancreatic surgery. I've seen cases where people had parts. You, don't, you can't remove the whole pancreas, but a lot of times I've seen people where they had parts of their pancreas removed. And remember, when you have the pancreas, what does it do? It produces digestive enzymes. Aside from making insulin, which is important for controlling blood sugar, the pancreas has an exocrine function, which is it makes enzymes and bicarbonate that help you to digest your food and neutralize the acid as it's pouring from the stomach into the small intestine. So again, another issue here. So if you've had any of these things, you know, and, and you didn't have what, what we would consider to be a nutritional, pre-surgical nutritional consult, meaning that they should have prepped you to understand that when you do this surgery, this is the lifelong risk of malnutrition that you're going to be facing. And these are the things that you need to focus on doing in order to offset as much of that as possible. Now, I've seen thousands of people with post-surgically like this and, and not a single case has somebody been properly educated uh, after having one of these procedures. Again, that's my experience, maybe, maybe um, Maybe, maybe other doctors have different experiences with that, but I've never seen a single case post-surgically where a person had the right informed consent to understand that the organ removal or the resection was going to lead to lifelong malabsorption and malnutrition issues. So then we have to get, we get them in after five years or 10 years later and there's severity of, of nutritional deficiency associated with this and that again can pose a major, major problem. To that individual. So these are all things that you want to be concerned with because again, if you have malabsorption, you've got to address it. You've got to address it. And sometimes that means your, you know, your gut has to be properly addressed. There's got to be some healing that occurs within the lining of the GI tract. Sometimes that means you have to, um, not, not sometimes, it, in my opinion, 100% of the time, what it means is you, you need to have your nutrition status measured because sometimes it requires higher doses of nutritional supplementation to overcome the years of damage. Remember going back to that, that very first slide that I showed you on, you know, on malabsorption, which is right here, nutrition deficiency inhibits healing. Inhibited healing equals poor outcomes. So if you're malabsorbing, this is you. 
right? So how do you stop this cycle from happening? Well, number one, you have to change your diet. And so getting your diet dialed in so that you're no longer damaging your GI tract becomes very important because this is one of the biggest reasons why this happens in the first place. Gluten, um, other food sensitivities can also do it. Food allergies can do it. So it's not just gluten, but it's other foods. It's chemicals in the food like pesticides. It's drugs that you take. It's surgical procedures that maybe you've had done. Like all these things we've talked about tonight can contribute to and lead to this scenario, which is poor outcomes for you. So if you're here at the poor outcome, what do you do? Like what, what is it that you do? Let's shrink this down and talk about what to do next, right? So if that's you, number one, measure your nutrition your status, right? Measure your deficiencies. And this is this is most important for your micro, what we talk about, vitamins and minerals. It's also important, you know, to look at in many many cases the amino acid levels of a person. So amino acids, micro the amino acids are the breakdown byproducts of protein. It's also important to look at your omega-3 fats, because a lot of times these are crucial and they're part of why a person is not repairing or not healing. So at the very bare minimum, you know, these things should be measured. Measuring them, why? Because if you have, if you have a deficiency, then what needs to happen is appropriate supplementation. And this, you know, again, sometimes the doses matter. A multivitamin is not going to cut it if you've got damage to your stomach and you're malabsorbing uh, and you're not making enough intrinsic factor, you're not going to absorb, you know, the B12 from a multivitamin. It's not going to be enough to overcome, you know, the potential need that's going to help your GI tract heal and repair. So again, it's supplementation with the right dose, with the right amount. This is where a lot of people fail is that, you know, they use products and some of these over-the-counter multivitamins you buy at the local drugstore. Most of that, first of all, it's junk. It's filled with with trash fillers, gluten fillers, sugar, you know, all these gummy candies that are supposed to have vitamins in them. It's all garbage with corn syrup and you're just doing yourself more harm than good. You've got to get the right amount of supplementation if you're going to overcome a problem like this. But even more importantly than, than measuring this is ask why. Ask why it happened in the first place, right? Why did the malabsorption happen? And again, for many of you, it's the diet. You're eating gluten, you're eating grains, and you're gluten sensitive. And so um, you're causing the problem by what you're eating. You're causing the damage. What damages the GI tract directly? It's what you put in your mouth. And if any doctor tells you differently, um, you know, you probably ought to look for somebody who's more of an expert. If you've got inflammatory damage in anywhere from your mouth to your anus, and you haven't had your diet analyzed as a potential cause, then your doctor's not doing his or her job. And so it becomes, it falls onto you now that you know this information to get and find an expert who can understand this, ask the bigger why, because no amount of medicine that blocks the way your GI tract works, right? There's a lot of different drugs that affect motility, um, and that will uh, affect pain levels or, or affect gas and bloating, et cetera, that you can take, right, that are just basically masks to the actual problem, but you've got to ask why. So once you know what the why is, you address the why, you measure the nutrition status so that you can address what may be lacking so that your body has the ability to recover properly and heal and repair. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.